Injuries are always a concern for athletes, but knee injuries are particularly an issue for women and can be career-ending. So female athletes, depending on the source that you read, are two to eight times more likely to have an ACL rupture compared to their male counterparts. And Damian Callahan, an assistant professor at the University of Oregon, wants to better understand that difference between men and women. We are interested in exploring some of the biomechanical and the cellular differences in, uh, in muscle and tendon tissues that might be explaining some of these differences. And see if anything can be done to better protect women and give us some potential better treatment options or training plans that can improve uh, outcomes for female athletes. We use ultrasound to get non-invasive measures of tissue mechanics. But he's not starting on the field or around respond. the track. Then we do biopsies in this room on that bed. We parse out the tissue into these little bundles. Callahan and his team are working at the cellular level, and to do that... Right in this area, kind of in this region, they need willing um, donors. Little, just a couple of little millimeters were removed. After putting the athlete through demanding knee exercises, they take a biopsy from the leg muscle. You know, a few hours in the lab, but a lot of a lot of help um, to Damien's research. So Jackie Schur is one yeah, of about yeah, 20 people who have donated a small part of their body to Callahan's study. You can see these are sort of like little translucent sections of muscle tissue. You can't change someone's body alignment. She's an athletic trainer for the UO track and field team and hopes this research can help to strengthen her athletes through improved training in the future. Then I can say, hey, to our athletes, this has been studied. These are the, the real responses. It's not, you know, propaganda that's been shown somewhere online, but it's actual evidence of how they can be a better athlete. And so we can look at it under this microscope it's tedious it work, here, tracking how muscle like. fibers react under That's different crazy. circumstances. We can measure the fiber a little bit more precisely by taking width measurements on here. So far, the they've already come to at least one conclusion. Our studies have revealed that changes in tendon compliance are pretty dramatic in, in male athletes, but somewhat blunted in female athletes. Essentially, when male muscles are tired or fatigued, they become less rigid. But female muscles don't change very much. So they don't have this sort of dynamic response to prior load the way the males do. So it's really, really fun to be kind of at the forefront of trying to discover some of these interactions. You said often female athletes are excited to join this effort. Why is that? Um, I think they have a vested interest in the outcome. Um, there is decades and centuries long sex disparity in biological, biomedical research. Oh yeah. I mean, sure agrees, saying it's time to better support female athletes, especially through science. It's huge, and just recognizing that they're becoming in the spotlight. Like, people are encouraged and want to understand the female athlete way better. At the University of Oregon, Ashley Grams, KGW News.